Hello Floss Tube. I'm Narelle from Simply Narelle and welcome to my channel about cross stitching. Now you know there's no cross stitch inspiration at all behind me. Um, there's nothing pretty to look at while I do these videos. I'm actually in my paper crafting studio so um, and I apologize for the glare on my glasses. I don't know how to angle it to sit so that it's not as glary but the light is coming in from the window so um, that's why there's really bad glare on my glasses and if I close my curtains then it's really dark so anyway you come here to see the stitching which I'm hoping that it will show up okay and just ignore the glare on my glasses <laughs> all right so I wanted to go through um, some new groups and things that I found out about which are really cool um, and then I will go through my my whips, what I've been working on, and the challenges I've been doing. Um, and in there, I think will also be a few new starts. I have one finish for this year. Um, my plans for February and a few other things that um, I want to do, and a little bit of haul. All right. So the first thing is um, I found this group called cross stitch around Australia now I'm Australian if you can't tell by my accent and um, I found this really cool group where they have set out kilometers between towns and it's meant to be that you stitch your way around Australia so for every um, you count all your stitches and then between locations it may have for example 130 stitches between um, Ballina and Byron Bay or something and then if you've done that 130 stitches then you say that well you're now travel you've traveled moved on from Ballina to Byron Bay or, or whatever it may be um, and it's lots of fun there's no reward or anything it's just fun seeing what everyone's working on and it gives you an incentive to stitch and I'm not a great counter so I don't count exactly I estimate and I work out well roughly okay 100 stitches is about that much and that's how much I've done or something like that so that's a really fun group I'll link it below if you're interested um, I don't know if it's open to people outside of Australia I I really don't know um, I'd have to check the rules and I'll put that below once I find out but that's really cool the other thing I've seen a lot of floss tubers do is the temperature tree by um, Stitch and Mummy and I know she has a few different ones out and this year she's got a, a word one where each of the months are done with the temperatures and it's really really cool so I thought I like the tree one so I purchased the tree one this is it temperature tree by stitch and mummy and I'll link that below as well and what you do is you stitch the the trunk and the branches and then each of these leaves is a temperature and there's a leaf for every day of the year so you start like January 1 and then work your way through and because there's different temperate zones around the world um, she has a scale of if you're in a cold climate or a hot climate or like a, an average climate so I had a look at the scale and I, I think I'm going to do the hot climate because our temperature up here in Brisbane rarely goes below uh, I mean 16 is rare it's like it's pretty much in your 20s most of the time um, and then up to the high 30s early 40s so I'm going to do I think the the warm or the hot range I haven't started yet and I know we are on it's like January 20 or something right now um, today but um, I have been logging in my little stitch book what the temperature is every day and I was just trying to find the chart so I can not the chart but the scale of temperatures so I can show you the range um, oh, it's in here somewhere If I find it I will pop a photo in or I can't wait, let me see I probably can't pop a photo in because it's part of what you purchase but it's a PDF download and I've seen lots lots of people stitch it so it's really cool uh, here we go oh, here we go so I'm hoping these are okay if someone tells me that's not okay to show it I'll edit the video and take it out but here you've got like a, a cold range. I thought I saw.
maybe it's on the actual purchase when you go to purchase it but there was a, a nice succinct chart that showed you the like color variances i thought for each um range and the sun's going away so it's getting a bit dull it's actually got early overcast outside it's very very windy so you might hear a bit of howling of the wind um no oh, i don't think but i'll sort of show you cold varied hot no it's not gonna not gonna show i'm oh, sorry there was a chart somewhere i saw um that showed it was really clear that the the cold temperatures are more like your blues and your greens and didn't go very much into the reds and oranges which depicts the hot temperatures but have a look um when i add the link it's really nice really cool and i'm just going to put the year 2021 underneath here so when i stitch it i'm just going to put 2021 brisbane um yeah just i don't know i won't do it every year because you'd soon end up with a whole wall of temperature things and once you've done it once or twice i'm a little bit over it so i don't think i'll do it again but it is quite a cool idea and i do love it and i love that tree so yeah unless she comes out with a um a, another one i really really like i wouldn't buy another one i could possibly do this one again um and do this more than sorry the glare like do this for another year um or maybe even what would be good is maybe like five years in between so you can see if you know what they say about temperature um global warming then your tree in five years should have a little bit more of the, the orangey color or anyway that'd be interesting to me all right so i found that um i also downloaded and uh, paid for the gift of stitching magazine download so i have had this ad come up on facebook for i don't know how long um and it's all the time all the time so i went oh, i'm just going to purchase it and actually there's quite a lot of good stuff in there some stuff i will never stitch but um i have the just cross stitch magazine or the digital subscription to that and i love the idea of purchasing a subscription and getting it lots cheaper than a physical magazine and in a physical magazine you're not going to stitch everything anyway and in digital one you just print out the pdf pages that you want so um and it takes up no room so like i don't have to find shelf space for the magazine so really really good and i'd recommend that the gift of stitching magazine because i found some really nice things in there that i want to stitch um, and the other group I found was the semi-stained, semi-sane stitches. And I heard about that from Robin Hall. I can't remember um, the name of her channel right now. Something about birds. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm sorry, Robin. Um, I will link it below. Um, and I finally found out how to get into this group. And they do lots of really good um, challenges every month by the look of it. So um, I've joined them and i've said i'm going to a few of their virtual events and fingers crossed i can keep up with it because i'm struggling at the moment to keep up with the magazine monthly bringer challenge which is what i'm going to get on to next um if you haven't heard, i promise we'll get to stitching soon i promise i'll show you my whips in a minute <laughs> i know you're sitting here going oh, it's eight minutes and she hasn't shown a stitch yet all right so what i wanted to show you was the things i've been working on for the monthly Bringo, so the magazine monthly challenge group. Uh, they're currently having a January Bringo event, and this is my Bringo board. So all the yellow numbers have been called, the green numbers have been completed. And so every day they call a new number, and you have to put a hundred stitches or an hour if you don't count, an hour's worth of stitching into that project that you have for that spot on your board. I was going great guns you can see all the green things that I have done and then about a week ago it all came crashing down and I came to a standstill and I haven't put a stitch into anything for a week um, and the yellow ones have been called and I've yet to complete them so you know if I had completed a few of them I'd have bingo by now and a lot of people have called bingo already I just got slack and carried away with other stuff and just never got back to completing these ones so my goal this weekend is to do a really big catch up so today is wednesday so there should be probably a new number called now i haven't checked today and then thursday friday so there'll be three more of these squares will be yellow um, by the end of this by the end of friday and then i'll spend saturday and sunday catching up hopefully so i'm going to go through what i've worked on 
Now the first one called was um, a whip or a new start with words. So this was called, I think, a couple of times. So this is my Twas a Night Before Christmas by Dimensions. Love this. Now you've seen this before because this was the first cross stitch I came back to when I found all my whips from when I moved that I didn't think came with me. Um, now if I find a picture of where I was beforehand, I will insert it. But this is where I currently am. I'm sorry, I haven't ironed anything. I didn't know it was a thing that you really should iron before you show what you're working on. But, you know, I'm learning. I'm new to all this floss tube stuff and all this, you know. You used to just stitch for your own delight. I'm sorry if that's back to front. Um, that's where I'm up to. I think um, I did the words, filled in the letters, and did a fair bit of the centre and the reindeer. And I may have showed that on the last video. I can't remember. It's been... A few weeks since I've done a floss tube so I apologize if you've seen this before but that's that was called I think a few times so I got a little bit of progress done on that and I mentioned last time about my project bags on my Etsy store well they're all sold out now so I've got you should see my sewing desk it is covered in fabric that I have pre-cut and trying to match up what goes together and then what do I have lining fabric for? What do I need to buy? And then hopefully, um, I would say, give me two weeks, there'll be more project bags up for sale. But I do have needle minders at the moment on, on my Etsy store. So that's one of my project bags that I'm keeping for me. I couldn't sell every one I made. <laughs> so that was the night for Christmas. Uh, that was called Two Days in a Row, which is fantastic. The next one was um, acrostic eye. So in the magazine monthly group, they have a theme every month and then they have an acrostic. So January's theme is New Year and then the acrostic is a firm. So for every word on the acrostic, you slot in a cross stitch project that suits that letter. So the I in a firm was called and I said well that's my I'll be home cottages which is from Twin Peak Primitives and I think I've shown this this is the wrong one that's not them hang on a minute got the wrong project it must have been called again later and I've put it further down my pile I know it's here um I've lost it where'd they go Oh, here we go. I left it in the tub. And you'll see, this is in a plastic bag because I haven't had time to make any project bags for me. It's very sad, isn't it? Alright, so I'm not sure if I've actually done anything on this since, and I don't know if I've shown it to you before. But that's it. That's all I have. I have shown it before because... I asked recommendations on how to deal with all the excess fabric because this is going to be a monster, monster piece. So that's all I got done on the first day it was called. It hasn't been called or I didn't have it in my my um, Bringo squares again. But I'll get you a picture if you haven't seen it. This is what it looks like. So this is a PDF download of all the cottages in one. And there is a stitch along for this and there's a group for it. So I haven't actually posted that I've started this in the group yet. And there's not um, a deadline in the group to do it. It's not time constrained. It's just that if you are stitching this piece, um, then you're welcome to join the group and participate in the group. And that's, you know, as simple as it is. So Pam from uh, Just Keep Stitching is uh, running that group. And it's a really lovely, friendly group. And you see people changing the colours of um, the chart. And some of them are really nice. Okay. And the next one is F. Was a Crossic F for flowers. So this is my monthly uh, flowers of the month sampler is what I'm calling it. And it is from Just, Just Cross Stitch Magazine. They had a series of flowers of the month. In their magazines so this is January and February 
for example, and they're all individual charts. So I've decided to chart this up as a sampler. So I'm doing, I think it's four across and three down or something like that, and putting all the months next to each other. And I didn't really get very far on this either. Where is it? Here it is. And I got stuck on the letters. All right, so that is that is as far as I got. All right, so that's the start of January. You really can't see the white very well on this. This is Cream Ada. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to backstitch around the white so that you can see it better. And I just don't know what color to do it. I'm thinking of maybe the lighter green, just backstitch around the white flowers because you really can't see them. Um, and there's a basket that goes down here. But the words January are done in quarter stitches. Now, on this Ada, it's really, really hard. They're right, really tiny, tiny stitches. I don't know if you can see them very well. I'm not sure it's going to focus for you. But they are tiny, tiny stitches. And I think my needle was too big. Um, I just picked a needle out of my stash that was from a past kit. Now, I don't have the right size needles. I have no idea what size needles I should be using for what fabric. Because, um, you know, when I was this, when I did my cross stitching before, 20 odd years ago, you just bought a kit and used whatever was in the kit. So they matched the needle with the fabric. Um, and I wasn't into all this picking your own fabric and all the array of fabrics that are around now and the different flosses. Oh my goodness, it's like an eye opener now. There is so much out there. Hence my stash has grown quite substantially. Um, so the needle was just, it was too blunt and it was so hard to get through the Ada. Like I had to, you know, go between the strands and really, really hard. So I found a, um, a needle with a much sharper point and that made it a little bit easier. Um, but I posted in the group, what should I do? Because I'm having a hell of a time getting these stitches in and I was ready to rip them out and just do cross stitches or back stitch. Um, and I'm going to persevere though with the sharper needle and see how we go. But this is how I've charted it out, just on a bit of grid paper from a notepad. So I'm going to do four across and three down. I think it's because I've worked out my material correctly. So that's the first time I've ever done something like that, like got all the individual ones and worked them out in a, a chart myself. So maths is never my strong point. So it's either going to be a great success or a dismal failure and you'll never see it again. <laughs> All right, so that was my, I'm calling that flowers in the month sampler. Okay, the next one is angel, I call it angel kids, but it's actually angel kisses. And this is, if I have the right bag, I think is that this one? No, that's the wrong one. So it must be called later in the month. So that's why it's not in my pile in order. This is it. All right, so it's called Angel Kisses by Dimensions. This was a kit that I got a long time ago. Lots of half stitches in this. Lots of blended um, threads in this. And I actually know that when I did part of the dress on this, I went, I did full crosses and then looked at the pattern closely because I'm not very good at reading. Like, I shouldn't say that. I, I'm i not great at following instructions. I, I'm one of those, that I know what to do and I just go ahead and do it and then I look at it and go, no, that doesn't look quite right. And this is one of those instances where I really should have read the instructions because there's um, half stitches and I did some of them as full stitches. So you may be able to tell where I went wrong. That's the progress on this, and like I said, if I find a picture of it before, then um, I'll show it. But I think some of the dress, some of the shading on here, I did as full stitches, full stitches, I should say, but they really need to be half stitches. So I did a lot of the fill in here of this lighter colour. I think this was called like two, or maybe even three, two or three nights in a row. So I got quite a bit done on this. It's going to take a long time to do. So 
um, yeah, I'm finding it a little bit challenging because there is an error in it and my stitches are out a couple of stitches and it's like I have gone too far now uh, to frog it and start again and um, I don't know when I did the mistake I think it was when I did it you know 20 years ago and then I put it away possibly that's when the mistake was so it's too far in the past to go and, and frog it I'm just going to work around it and hope it looks okay in the end next one uh, that was called was a magazine new start and not part of the monthly challenge so I wanted to do this from uh, I think it was November from the magazine monthly November challenge that I didn't put a stitch into anything so this is it it is from just cross stitch October 2019 called happy haunting Halloween sampler I love this I absolutely love it now we don't celebrate Halloween and my husband is very anti Halloween because he's very anti American <laughs> I don't know but um, for some things and he can't stand Halloween he reckons it's a it's a great big just money spinner by retail and blah blah and he's very jaded because he spent 20 years working at Kmart so he's over well and truly over the whole retail scene anyway but I just have an urge to um, do something Halloweenish so I started it and I'm really pleased with how it's coming along there we go. I have my row of putty cats. They are so cute. Look at them. They're really cool. And there's actually, um, is it e toil? I don't know. It's like a sparkly thread in there somewhere. I don't know if you can't see it very well in the yellow. It's probably not going to focus either. But yeah, that's really nice. I love that. So I'm going to actually, um, it's not on my Bringo again to get called so it probably won't see any more stitching in January um, but I want to put it on a um, I haven't put it in my whip go either I don't think I want to put it on something maybe the same stitches because I, I want to get that done because I'm, I'm really enjoying stitching it okay the next thing that was called was R acrostic R so I'm back on to my did a bit of stitching on my rose splendor this is only little but it's quite detailed and you know i really should have had it finished by now it's a gold collection petite's rose splendor sorry for the glare really pretty that is so me i know exactly where this is going to hang in my bedroom when it's finished sorry it's not ironed and hopefully you're not going to see through it too much have a look but there we go that's where i am so i got the bottom leaves finished here a bit of the shading i got this, the stems here a bit of the shading around i don't have much more of that to go and then i think it's back stitching and the border it as happy as no it has a border so not that one what stitch gerald yeah, that is stitched sorry yeah so all this that gold there up to there to the white mat so all that around there is stitching so the borders quite a lot of work in that border and um, I'm getting close to getting to that so it's coming along nicely I actually really really enjoy stitching on this because the fabric is really soft now it is a 18 count Ada but it is really soft and pliable it's not stiff like your normal Ada and I'm I stitch this one in hand and it's just it's beautiful to work on really really nice and I think I did last video I said something about I bought a bolt of fabric um, I bought a bolt of 18 count no it's not 18 count it's 25 count Lagana and um, yeah I haven't been game to kit anything up with that yet because the holes look really little and it's the first time I'll be stitching on even weave so I've only ever stitched on Ada so I know I have to do it, but if you have any advice, let me know because I'm a bit freaked out about getting to that. <laughs> Alright, next one was stitch with your favourite colour. So I then went, well I like pink, so my Cooktown Orchids is my favourite. Oh, it's got pink in it. So this is it. This one has some drastic mistakes in it, but I'm not frogging it. Somewhere 
around here, I think there's a really terrible, I think that's where I am on that side, I don't know, one of these orchids. There's a really horrible mistake and it's out by a quite a bit actually, but I'm making it work. I'm not, I'm not into frogging and I don't know how far back the mistake was. And like I got this kit three and a half years ago when I felt I needed to get back into cross stitching and I hadn't gone through my wardrobe to see everything that I had unpacked. I don't even think I'd unpacked everything at that stage. Um, and I'm not sure what I had in my stash, what I bought with me and what didn't make it. So I went and bought something and this is what I bought. So this is where I'm up to. So I'm not sure where the mistake is, um, but I'm trying to stitch around it and hoping that it won't be noticed because they're not perfectly formed flowers. They're a little bit, um, what am I trying to say? They're not all uniform. They're a little bit unique, each flower. So I don't think it's going to be noticeable. As long as they look like an orchid, then I should be right. That's my theory anyway. So that's where I am with that one. I've got this down actually for um, the whip. I think it's a, a bingo call of the whip you dread the most. And that is this one. I just, I'm not enjoying it at all. I just, but I'm not going to give up on it. I'm going to get it finished. Once I start something, I have to finish it. So that's, that was that one. The next one called um, was Rose Splendor again, which I've done that. And then the next one called was Halloween. I did that. Uh, the next one called was your most recent whip, which is the one I started in September, which is my squirrel. And again, he's got a little mistake in him too. I don't know. Obviously, I don't concentrate enough when I'm stitching. I need to sort that out. So this is my little squirrel. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is from Just Cross Stitch magazine. We don't have squirrels in Australia, but he called to me. I just love him. So I had to stitch it. Uh, just cross stitch designs, but I don't know what magazine it's from. It's not too long one. It might be 2019 or something. I will find it. Um, it's on pages 82 to 86. It's called Autumn Friend, but I don't know what magazine, what month it was. So a lot of people know this pattern. A lot of people have said they wanted to stitch it. And this is where I am. I got a little bit of him done. Now I have substituted some colors on this because I didn't have much of a stash. And when, if you've watched my first video, um, you will know that I didn't buy any flosses. I just pulled from the kits that I had. I had lots of kits in my stash that I ended up with that I didn't know that I had. Like I, I went through my wardrobe and went, oh, look at all this. I must just unpack this and shoved it in the wardrobe anyway. So I just pulled from all the flosses that I had in kits and then I did buy some um, just random colours from a lady and I didn't have any plans for them. Luckily enough I could have had enough of the colours to substitute but um, his colouring may be off a little bit so I'll see what he looks like when he's finally finished. But um, I'm not going to restart him because that's part of like even if he's not perfect and his colours don't blend, I'm not going to restart him or redo him because that's part of my stitching journey. So, um, and like when I make a mistake, if it's too far back and I, I haven't realised until I'm quite advanced, it's like, well, I'm not going to fix it because that's my stitching journey and it teaches me to be more careful um, and actually not take shortcuts like I'd have with the flosses on this girl. So, yeah. That's my stitching journey, so I'm going to keep him going. He's unique to me, my little squirrel. Um, what else was next? My oldest whip, which was my angel kids. I've done that. Um, oh, and then the next one was something that reminds you of your childhood. And uh, Rosella Arnott's is a big Australian, big in Australia when growing up. Everything was Arnott's biscuits. So, I bought this off a lady. Um, no, it's actually, I was, look, I'd seen it somewhere, searched for it, found a, uh, 
needle workshop somewhere re uh, somewhere regional in Queensland and they had a kit of it and it's hard to find so I think I talked about this once before it's on black ada which is a challenge so I have started this and yeah it is a challenge it's on um, it's quite a big count actually it's on 14 count ada which is really stiff but this is where I'm at so only a little start because I only did it the one night so that is where I'm at okay so that's just the branch so what I'm doing is the branch here that the bird is sitting on so that's like that end there and that little branch there and I had to frog this like three times because um, I mixed up the colors now the colors weren't numbered in the kit you had to just um, oh, that glare is really bad you had to try and did you have to try and work out what number was what I was just all in a big bundle and you had to work out what number was what and I think when I was reading the chart it, it was late and yeah you really shouldn't stitch late at night if you're tired because you make these mistakes and I actually had um, this color the lightest color on the bottom and I'm stitching it going, hang on, if that's the branch, shouldn't the light colour be on the top and the dark underneath? And I realised I had totally reversed my colours. So, yeah, I had to unpick it all and start again. Anyway, so that's my arm. So that's going to come up again. Um, it has been called again, but I haven't got to it in the last week. Um, it was called something that is a gift. So this is a gift for my husband. He, oh, you know, well, he wanted something. He wanted when he's when I, I showed it to him somewhere online, and he goes, "I really like that. Can you do that?" So that's that. I'm doing this for him, and I think all the others I've already shown you that were called. Right. So that is my whips. Now I'm doing whip go this year, first time, and I've never done it before. I keep, I kept hearing about it, and went, "I'm going to do it." So I have my whip go board. I've probably shown it to you before, but there's my whip go board and that's what I'm doing. The yellow ones have been called. So three were called in January and the green ones mean that they've been completed. So I actually completed something. We had a whip go weekend. I think it was a couple of weeks ago now. I had great plans to do lots that weekend and I got one thing done, but I finished it yay so i have a finish and i'm not sure if i've shown it to you i've put it on instagram but i haven't actually i don't think shown so this is from a magazine it is from linda jenkins and it's from the uh, uh christmas ornaments 2020 dust cross stitch magazine and that's it there and i finished it i haven't ffo'd it i'm learning all this new technology it's amazing terminology i should say all right so there's my finish really cute now i didn't have um the beads that she said but i found i had used to do uh jewelry making and i found a heap of beads um big box of beads that i had i pulled them out and um i found these tiny little ones in there clear crystals they're probably a little bit big, but they work. So I think I know how I'm going to finish this. So this is part of my um, hashtag 12 in 21 Christmas ornament stitch along. And I can't remember the lady who's running it, but the idea is that for each month of 2021, you do a Christmas ornament. So that is my first. So I'm on track. One of 12 complete. So hopefully by the end of the year, I will have 12 or more than 12. I'm aiming to do more than 12. So that's my one and only finish. I know how I'm going to FFO that. So I just need to um, get that happening. But I'm going to wait till I've got a few more to do, I think, before I finish it. So I do more than one at once. All right, so my plans in February the magazine monthly challenge the theme is love and the acrostic is candy so i've worked out that now your your main piece for the theme has to be from a magazine but the acrostic can be anything so i have found this apologies for the stripes 
in the printout. There's no chart on this. Um, my printer had an issue with the print head. So this is called Hearts on a String and it is from Just Cross Stitch Magazine, June 2018. And I love this. This is like shabby. So me. So that's it. It's like three hearts going from big down to low. And I love how they finish them in a little hanger. I plan to do that. Something like that. Hopefully it looks that good. So the first one's a little birdie with the beautiful roses. Then you've got a birdhouse with the roses and then finally just a rose. I love that. That is really, really pretty. So that is my February focus piece for the magazine monthly challenge. And the rest of it I've tried to um, put in current whips that I've got. So I don't want too many new stars um, because I'll find that I'll just lose focus and I get, and I don't I won't feel like I'm achieving anything. I need to actually see a finish or see progress to keep going. Um, so for C, I have my cooked down orchids that I showed you earlier. Then um, A is for the angel kisses that I showed you earlier. N, the night before Christmas. Um, D is for Dimensions Christmas stocking. Now I've shown you that before, uh, stocking I've been working on. And then Y for yellow for my squirrel. So they're my plans for February, along with um, the whip go, whatever it's called. I want to get a good start on my uh, whip goes that have already been called. And the other two that I haven't put a stitch in yet. We'll see how we go. And of course, another ornament for February. Now, um, a little bit of haul. I got my Lowry stand. I ordered it uh, New Year's Eve, I think it was. New Year's, you know, something just for New Year's. Um, not realising that the local needle workshop I got it from in Brisbane was on holidays until the 14th of, of January. And I think, I don't think I saw anything on their website telling me that. But anyway, um, it arrived the other day. It's fantastic. I love it because when I stitch and hold, I get really tense and my left shoulder aches like really bad. And like when I'm making a quilt, I can only do a limited amount of the time because it aches really bad. So I thought, well, I need to get something to hold my work. So I eliminate that shoulder pain because one night I couldn't sleep at all. The pain was so bad. So I got the Lowry stand and I love it. It's really good. Very expensive. Not sure it's worth the money, but it is very good. All right. So that was a major haul. I've ordered a few things. Um, or no, I, on a, what's it called? Aussie's cross stitch unload or something like that, unstash, whatever, unload. Uh, I've bought a few things on there cheap. And I'm going to try, you know, from the end of this month, I'm not going to buy anything else. I have more than enough to last me a lifetime. So I'm going to try not to buy anything else. And I, I have enough magazine, virtual, ma virtual magazines, that I don't think I need to buy anything else. So, but I did do a little bit of shopping because I saw these and went... <clears throat> undenied about them for a long time and then fell in love and went yes I gotta get them. Now saying that, the Nashville I saw just saw the Nashville stitching thing. I don't know, convention, whatever it's called has been cancelled. But the designs are all still gonna bring out some really beautiful designs. So I have to break that no shopping rule. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, I got these Prairie Schooler. These are uh, book book number eighty eight, Old World Centres number two. I got them because I want to do my Christmas ornaments and my plan is to get one of those really skinny trees so all the rage this year Christmas trees and I've got a corner I can put it in where the animals can't get to it the dog and the cat can't get won't get to it um, and that's going to be my cross stitch ornament tree so I need to get a lot of ornaments done this year so it looks like it's got something on it I can't just have that one ornament on it I have to do more so that's my plan <laughs> wish me luck so that is um, that one, Old World Centres 2, and I got Nutcrackers, again from the Prairie Schooler, Nutcrackers. So I love him, he's so traditional, this is my type of Nutcracker. Love Nutcrackers, so I got that one as well. These are just charts. Then I got Songs of the Season, and again, I'm going to make these into little ornaments. So, I don't know how big they are. They might be too big to go on the tree, but I'll still hang them around the house. And then, Santa and Friends. 
so I got all these from uh, Etsy shop called Motifs by Hand, I believe. They're in Canberra, ACT in Australia. So I'll link the Etsy shop below. Yeah, so I got them. That is my haul that I can think of now, besides the stitching tree, uh, temperature tree. I think that's it. So thank you for watching, everyone. I uh, can't believe I went on for 40 minutes. Oh, my goodness. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a stitchy week and I'll be back if not next week, the week after. So I won't come back until I actually got some progress on my whips to show you. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here chatting and no one needs that. Again, apologies for my my um, paper crafting studio, my office. It's a mess. Um, eventually going to get some um, cross stitches on a wall in a corner that I can sit in front of it to do these. So, but that'll be years down the track. <laughs> anyway, have a wonderful week. And I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.